Find out why our next guest didn't become a Mormon, next on the Ex-Mormon Files. Hi, and welcome to another episode of the Ex-Mormon Files. I'm your host, Bishop Earl, and I appreciate you joining with us. Last time we got to meet Cindy Bauer, and today we get to meet Tom Bauer, her, her husband, of how many years? Forty-something years, 40 -something and exciting. Years. Yeah, I really appreciate you coming from Hawaii again and, and sharing your story a little bit. And I introduced you as someone who didn't join the Mormon Church. So tell us a little bit about your background. Were you? Well, my background is I was, I was a Roman Catholic, you okay. know, so I knew a lot about God, your but I didn't were... know God, and okay. um, and that was just so I had a, a, a you know a. A, a religious foundation, but yeah. I didn't really know God. So, okay. And then I got into drugs and dropping acid, and I was a surfer from, Where was this from at? Southern California. So oh. my goal was just to surf the world, and uh, that's what I wanted to be. I just wanted to be a surfer. Wow, all all the way through. I mean, I know the the guys over in California. They always call the radio or find out for what the weather is right. and how high the waves are yeah. and all it's the that. Endless summer. Yeah. Was that what you were yeah. into? Yeah. Through high school and all Everything, that. Yeah. Yeah. So were you? Do you feel like you were religious at all? Or I mean, no, not really. I think I had a fear. I think what I was taught was I had a fear and a reverence for God. So I you? always had a respect to, yeah. to honor Him. You know, so I, I understood. You know, the consequences of sin, even though yeah. you know I was I wasn't I was sinning. You know, <laughs> right. smoking pot and doing everything else. You know, so um, interesting. And then we went from there. So I ended up, you know, just basically traveling the world. You know, surfing. But it was interesting because I was living... Oh, in competitions? Uh, well, not stuff, in competitions. Or? I mean, I was in clubs and, yeah. you know, I wasn't a professional surfer, but, but that was my whole world lifestyle. Doing it, right. yeah. oh. So I was in... I, actually, I was living in South Africa in Jeffreys Bay, uh, which is, if you're a surfer you know and you're that, watching right? this, you really know what Jeffreys <laughs> Bay isn't. But I, I had to get... I was living in, in a place, Port Elizabeth. So I was in a hotel and the, the people who own the hotel, hotel came up and says, Tom, some Americans left you a gift. I said, what is that? So I went and they gave it to me. And what do you think it was? It was a Book of Mormon, two Mormon missions. And that was my first time that I'd ever heard anything about Mormonism. Even, even from California Not times, even California, I never heard, heard about Mormonism. Deserved. So that began my curiosity. And of course, I was doing missions in Africa. And then I remember I Christian was, missions? Christian missions, okay. yeah, because I was a Christian by the time I, I left oh, to go I to see. Africa. Oh, okay. And then I was going through some missionary training or MTC, Christian style. And there was an ex-Mormon that was in there. So that was the first time I ever heard the testimony of somebody who had left Mormonism. I see. So then, of course, what do you think I wanted to do? I wanted to meet some Mormon missionaries. So I met some Mormon missionaries there, and they just massacred me. I say, do you believe that Jesus Christ was the Son of God? Absolutely. Do you know that Jesus Christ died for your sins? And by the time we finished the conversation, I was like a dog with his tail between his legs. They just, they just ruined me, you know, because I thought I had it all together. And but that began. It was. It didn't draw you toward them, though. I mean, it didn't no. It draw made you me. It made me want to realize that I was biblically untrained. So that draw me closer to know the scriptures. But that was the first time where I felt like. I need to make a commitment to know the scriptures, but at the same time, yeah. get to know why Mormons believe what they believe. Let me back up just a little bit. You said you were kind of raised or born Catholic, mm -hmm. and then you, somewhere along the way, become Christian, as, as we'd say. What happened? Well, How did that happen? Yeah, so like I was actually working in Alaska. I was surfing in, I was a kind of, a, <laughs> I was, it was like I was, I was living in a, in a, in a, in a community, a commune, actually in Kauai. Really? You know? We we're dropping acid and smoking pot and stuff. And then I went up to Alaska to get money to go to Europe uh, and, and Africa. So when I was up there, I was work. I worked above. You need to write a book. I, 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 I worked to write above a book. Yeah, the, <laughs> you know, the Arctic Circle yeah. for an oil company. There was like 30 of us out there. And when I came home, two of my friends that were, you know, druggies with me, they said, hey, you want to go to a, you want to go to church? And I was like, I was like, I kind of freaked out. But anyway, they took me to Calvary Chapel. This was in 19... 75. Oh my goodness. Yeah, and Chuck Smith. And Chuck Smith was there, and a guy named Lonnie Frisbee he had long hair and a beard. And I, all of a sudden, they just worship. I never heard worship. And there was this song that says, With one hand lift with Jesus, and with the other one bring a friend. And the guy that brought me there, he grabbed my hand 
and he lifted it up. And it was like the Spirit of God just came on me and I just wept and wept and wept. And before you know it, I was saying the sinner's prayer. <laughs> Lonnie Frisbee and Chuck Smith were there. They led me. There was maybe like 30 of us. This was like uh -huh. in the little chapel. Uh -huh. And then they couldn't even drop me off at home. I said, I couldn't even go when I was weeping. I, I, the, in other words, my conversion was so radical. Wow. And then the friends, it's interesting, they said, well, you know what? You got to go to a Bible study. <laughs> I said, okay. So they took me to church that night. And I go, well, of course I'll go to Bible study. And guess what they said? They said, tonight we're going to go door to door. And I, like, <laughs> I was in a panic. I went after dinner, door to door in my community. And what do you think happened? I saw door after door after door open. We led people to the Lord. We prayed with people. And then we came back. And guess what? They pulled the curtain. It was a radio station. And before I know it, I'm in the radio station sharing my testimony of going door to door. And the, you oh know, then goodness. there was a photographer there. He took my picture. And then a couple of days later, they said, you know what you got to do? You got to go out on the street and share your faith. So we were out on the street. I was passing out Bibles in downtown Long Beach. <laughs> and a guy came up to me because I looked like a hippie kind of a yeah, yeah. guy. And he looked at me and he says, you know what? I'll take that if you don't smoke dope. What do you think I told him? I said, no, I didn't. And I lied. And instantly right there on that street corner, the power of God and I was totally set free. Never smoked pot, never took drugs. I was clean from that day on. You were convicted. Huh? I was convicted <laughs> big time. But then that's what lead me. So I go to to Europe and, and Africa as a Christian and become oh, a missionary see. there. Okay. Yeah. And then I come back and I got invited to be a youth pastor at a church up in Washington. And I remember I literally got on my knees and God spoke to me to cancel it and go and get a job with a Mormon company. And so, this is in California? This is in California. Well, if those that were listening last time to Cindy's story, mm -hmm. she talks about a golden contact yeah. who came in and influenced five or six yeah. Mormons. That was you. That was me. And you were, okay, so tell us this so, story so anyway, so I, So I'm, I'm, the, I'm the Christian that was taught how to hear God's voice. So like sometimes when I speak, I say, I hear God speak to me every single day. And that's the truth. So I walk into this Mormon company, and of course, I'm the golden contact. And because course, you have high morals. I have high morals, and they find out I don't smoke, I don't drink, I don't believe in having sex before a marriage, and they go like, man, this is too good to be true. Like, I'm a, <laughs> Let's I, get know, baptized. I'm a fly in his web. <laughs> you know, this baptism is going to happen fast. So the owner of the company, he's a stake president. They're 70s, they're returned Mormon missionaries, you know, the BYU graduates in this company, and me. All right. So then the bishop and Cindy and and of course Cindy yeah and that's <laughs> okay. that's a that's a whole other story from maybe another program but it's kind of fun so the the stake president his he's really nice and he calls me into his office big desk and he challenges me to pray about the Book of Mormon and of course I left I don't know maybe it was uh, maybe it was next week or something he calls me into the office closes the door big desk him and I. It's just like, you know, how bishops kind of oh, yeah, take yeah. people into their yeah, office, yeah. closes the door. He looks at me. He said, Tom, did you pray about the Book of Mormon? And I said, yes, I did. He said, well, what did God say? I said, God gave me an inner witness that the Book of Mormon is not of God. <laughs> and his eyes got big. He looked at me. He raised his fist up. He slammed it on his desk and he said, the hell you did. Only the devil would tell you the Book of Mormon is not of God. <laughs> and I just stood there just petrified to go, I'm going to lose my job. But I didn't lose my job, and he kept me there. Wow. So that began my lifetime commitment to learn everything I could to be a witness to the Mormon people. So my whole transition to, into, into Mormonism, basically, or to understand Mormonism, was to love them unconditionally but to also know why they believe what they believe, to see how God could use me to be an effective witness to bring mm. them to Jesus Christ. Now, Cindy said that you influenced a number of people. Did that bother the owners of this I company? I think it probably did. <laughs> but, you know, the, we did, they did, we did a lot was... of stuff on the side, you know. Oh, okay. So, and what was interesting well, because, I mean, she tells the stories like I'd have all these gospel tracts. I mean, some from some of the old timers like Einar Anderson. I mean, these are guys way, you know, former Mormons way back when. So I had my whole bag that I'd carry around with me. And I guess it fell out and went all over the office. And Cindy and the, the lady that's working there, a Mormon and the secretary, are like, well, like, what do you think he's doing with that kind of stuff? You know, so so I was very active in, in learning how to share um, Jesus with all my Mormon friends. 
-hmm. of course, I just fell more and more in love with Mormon friends. And the more I began to love them, the more I wanted to ask God to show me how I could effectively reach them by just by just being kind and and being effective. So so I'd go to BYU, I'd go to I go to the MTC and go through there. I, I learned everything. You know, I had Study stacks like this. Everything. I read everything you could possibly. So I educated myself and. It's really funny because I could go and basically it's because really Mormonism is like learning a foreign language. So as a non-Christian, I mean as a non-Mormon to all the non-Mormons out there, I basically learned how to speak Mormonism, the language of Mormonism. Try and that. sometimes they'd say like, like, are you a bishop or like, you know, how do you, why do you, how do you know so much? I say, it's because I love Mormon people and I want to know why they believe what they believe. So when you, when you see, that's where we believe that education, when you educate yourself about say Mormonism or Islam or something, God will always bring Mormons or Muslims to you because he knows that you're going to you be an effective witness. With so the more you learn, the more yeah. God's going to use you to be an effective witness. Well, in just a brief moment, if you can, we know, we didn't hear from Cindy exactly how this connection with you and uh, you and Cindy occurred. Mm. How, how did you romantically get involved well, in all that. Well, obviously, you know, we, we don't believe in missionary dating, <laughs> but she'll tell you, like, she, she had the three Ds of Mormonism. You date them, you dunk them, and you drop them, you know? <laughs> That's kind of like, that was kind of her style, oh. you know? So so her, her stake president, you know, her bishop says, well, this is a good one. And so what was so interesting is that her maiden name, her birth name, and my name, surname were the same. So she had never met another Bauer. So... So she's Cindy Bauer Bauer. Yeah, so oh. so the stake president says, well, this is a good one for you. All we've got to do is get him into the church. Uh -huh. So she came up to me and said, hey, would you take me to my father? Because she'd never met her biological father. And I said, the only place I'll take you is to church. <laughs> yeah, so what happened is kind of a funny story, but I had some tickets to go to this concert, and this other girl who I I liked didn't couldn't go. So I said, hey, you want to go to a Christian concert? It was, the, it was a group called The Love Song. So... That night, we're driving home, and of course, I drop her off, and on the way, she's just spinning the Mormon web around me. And so when we got to her house, I said, you've deceived me all night, and I'll never see you again. So she was kind of like waiting for maybe the kiss at the door. She said she went inside and, you know, smelled like, you know, did I, why, why wouldn't, why did he say that to me? So that led, basically, uh, I, her, she was attracted more to me because of the fact that I had a, a biblical stance. I, I knew that she was deceiving me. I didn't compromise even in a kiss because, I mean, Jesus was betrayed by a kiss. So, you know, <laughs> some of my friends have never even kissed until the day they get married. That's the standard that I was yeah. that I was raised with in the missionary training. So I would never tell a girl I love her within the next breath I say, will you marry me? So I had a very high standard. And, of course, she had never seen that kind of standard. So that attracted her to me. But I was attracted to her because I wanted to see her come to know Jesus. Yeah. So then I learned everything I possibly could. And, and because she was a seminary teacher, that was great for me because she would teach me. But then I would also say, hey, you know, I read this over here. And uh, could you help me? Like, uh, I don't quite understand this. And I'd give him some kind of, <laughs> you know, the, yeah. what people would say is anti-Mormon. But really, it wasn't anti-Mormon. It was just Mormon doctrine. And so she helped me learn more about Mormonism. Well, it must have been a thrill to watch her progress and, oh, it was and like, change her it heart. It was amazing. And, you know, I, I honestly tell people like, they, well, did you get like really emotionally involved? And I said, well, I, I, I would, you could come as close to the line as you could, but at any time, you know, I would just say it's over. So she was basically my, my way of learning how to witness to Mormons because she was such a strong Mormon and because she was a seminary teacher. She knew all the answers, and then she could help me if I had the answer. But at the same time, it was getting uh, her to think more about Mormonism. But at the same time, she was being introduced to a Jesus that she didn't know. And she didn't share. Like, she still spoke at a zone conference, you know, on how to use the Book of Mormon to witness to the gracer, you know. Too. And so some of the elders came up to her and says, hey, you know, I know I know the prophet, and I and I... You know, I know Joseph Smith and everything, but I don't know the Savior the way that you know the Savior. And that just like, that hit her because all of a sudden the Jesus that I had introduced her to, she was bringing into the seminary and, and sharing with the, the missionaries. Yeah, it sounds and that like was part of the convicting thing. Is that that it was a di totally different Jesus. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. And yet we, we Mormons use that Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. They take the sacrament every Sunday. They pray in his name. Mm-hmm. 
But for some reason, when they leave the church, we've noticed so many don't have Jesus with them, do they? No. Yeah, they become and agnostic, part of the, atheist. And, and you know, I work with so many young people, and they just say, hey, I hate the church, but I love God. And I say, you can't separate the two. And so with all my LDS friends, you know, whether they're former Mormons or whether they're transitioning out of the church, you always want to bring them back to having that relationship with Jesus Christ. And, yeah. You know, but it's hard. But you just keep loving them, and you just believe that, you know, I, I kind of put it like it's a, a 1 to 10 scale, you know, so they're at a negative 1 to 10. <laughs> and so the job is is to bring them to a 1. And then if I can get them to a 2. So like right now, I'm, I'm here in Salt Lake City. I'm, I'm living yeah, on the street homeless. Tell us about why you're here, actually. Well, one, of the, one of the ways that I found to uh, really reach out, because obviously Cindy mentioned that we do a lot of work uh, with homeless. Yeah. So I know there's a lot of homeless here in Salt Lake City. So what I've done is I've started this, uh, I've made a 10 year commitment to come to Salt Lake City for a week every and year. And this is your second year. This is my second year. No money, no cell phone, and just live on the street and be available 24 hours a day to just love on people. Mormons, street people, it doesn't matter who it is. Huh. And it's just been absolutely fantastic. I, I wrote, I just wrote in my journal today, I said it's like living in a seven star hotel for seven weeks. That's how exciting it is. And this whole week I've just been talking to Mormons and non-Mormons. What, do you, what do you, what, any stories oh, you, you can account. share? Yeah, or? like I was, um, there was a guy, he was, just, he was just coming out of the temple and we were just sitting there and he had a book of Mormon. And he said, hey, sit down. So he just sat down. And we said, like, what, what's going on? He says, well, I was just over at the temple and talking to the sisters, and I just had some questions. And then I said, well, well, let, let's just talk about it. So uh, I said, hey, you know that God was once a man, don't you? And he goes, no way. And the Mormon was walking by. I said, hey, excuse me, just come over here. So can I just ask you a question? And of course, the Mormon goes, yeah. So I said, who's God was once a man? And he goes, of course he was. <laughs> and the guy just goes, like, what? <laughs> you know, and then, then he left. And then another Mormon's walking by, and it says, "Hey, do you believe that uh, God is married and has wives, and you know, and He can become a God?" And the Mormon goes, "Well, absolutely, I believe that." <laughs> you know, so, so he's he's done founded. But the guys that are with me, they're all Christians and never been Mormons. So we have a he's a he's an older guy. He's walking by, and I say, "Hey, just have a seat." And he sits down. He says, so "I said, what do you do?" He says, "Oh, I'm a temple worker," and um, and so the guys are sitting around, and we go, "Like, do you believe that you can become a God?" and it was just like he had just gone to a party. He was so excited. He goes, of course I do. And, of course, all the guys who are non-Mormons, they go like, did he just really say that? <laughs> so so basically what it is. <laughs> yeah, so basically it's, it's educating a new generation of young people who have morals and standards that will love the LDS people unconditionally without an anti-Mormon kind of bias behind them. Yeah. And so because we're living on the street, I'm all friends with all the Mormons you know, the ones even that work in, the, in Temple Square and all around because we're, we're not a threat to them because we're, we're basically teaching character. So it's kind of a funny thing, but when you walk around from the, um, the, from the temple over to across the street, I guess it's on the south on side. On the south side. Yeah, there's a little button you push across and it says, and it, you hear this word, wait. So I started telling all the Mormons, I said, well, you know what that means, don't you? The church put that in there because it means wait until marriage. And so they all just kind of laugh, you know, because I'm using, I'm using character building. So I'll tell them, go, you know what we teach our young people? We teach them is that it's not about finding the right one. It's about being the right one. And they go, wow. And I said, you know, your gifts and talents will take you to the top, but only your character will keep you there. So what we're doing is we're teaching biblical principles through character development and teaching how to, how to live a godly life, a moral life with abstinence and you know, yeah. no drugs, and, and it resonates with the Mormons because we're, we're teaching them character because they all want to be men and women of character. Yeah. And then when you win them as a friend, then you can win them a Jesus. Now, you said that you're with a, a group of seven or eight people, mm -hmm. and, and are you dressing down a little yeah, we're bit? Just, we're just, actually, I kind of dressed up to come here, oh, but yeah, yeah I'm, I'm, I'm sleeping on the street. Well, and they're from know. all over the Yeah, we world. have somebody from Germany, and there are different parts of the U.S. that have just come to just learn how to love people. Because see, if you start with that, then it doesn't matter who they are, they're gonna, you're going to love them. So I'll tell you an example. So I was, uh, I was surfing in a remote place in Oman, and I was on a boat going to a remote island, and there was a Muslim guy, a turban, long beard. And at the end of the conversation, he looked at me and said, I hate America, but I like you. And that's what we're trying to do is we're building a bridge. He can sense your heart. He, well, and so can the Mormon. He, he knows that we're not a threat to them. 
because yeah. we're, we're just loving him unconditionally. And then if he wants to bring up a topic, or if I just ask him a question, then it will lead, basically it'll, it'll lead to Jesus. Because every question, whether you just start with, with anything, technically as a believer, we're to lead him to Jesus. So we just build the bridge, keep building the bridge. And sometimes I'm just building, you know, so we, we don't believe in just blessing, we believe in building. So we're building a platform or we're taking them closer to Jesus, and then somebody else is coming closer. So let, let me tell you a story. So Cindy mentioned about we bought a porn shop, a 24-hour porn shop, a liquor store, a strip yeah. club with a brothel, with a stall shower, you know, inside the strip club. And this lady, she had planted a church in our town, and when she saw what we had done, she told me that her and her husband had laid hands on the exact buildings that were in a half a city block and prayed for 60 years. Oh. And she said, my husband never got to see it in his lifetime. He passed. And I did. And she was weeping uncontrollably <laughs> in my chest. And when she came to herself, she looked at me, and she pointed her finger and said, don't you take the credit. And then it hit me <laughs> that the prayers that we're praying today yeah. are for not us for to even to see, but it's the next generation. So the prayers and the witness that we're doing for the Mormons now, we might not even see in our lifetime. It right. might be 40 years from now when they see, pray, you know, when they see the seeds or the, right. the prayers that we pray. So we're, we're, we're looking at it a little different. We're just saying, man, if we can get them from a one to a two and just love them unconditionally, and then you come along and the next guy comes along, and even if it takes 60 years, so I realized that she had prayed for the exact buildings we're in and laid her hands on it for 60 years. And that's what I believe is so fun about now witnessing for Jesus because it's not all about seeing the results today. It's about understanding that Trusting the results that... might come years from now yeah. and you just have to be faithful. So what I did is I just said, God, I make a lifetime commitment to radically serve you all the days of my life and never go back. So my life motto is to hear God and obey God and let him deal with the results. So I'm in here, Salt Lake City, just obeying God and doing what he told me to do, and I'll let him deal with the results. And I'm having fun doing it. That's, That's the amazing. thing. Yeah. And when you think back of, of your high school life and the, and the things that you've experienced and now how God has changed your heart, mm -hmm. how, how things have, have you've become born again or yeah. a new creature and Cindy as well. It's yeah. just joyful. Well, it's fun serving God. Yeah. I don't know how much time we have, but I'll, I'll tell you another story. Yeah, I was, please do. I like quotes, so I was walking in the back of one of our stores, and I said, God, I want a quote. And I heard him literally speak into my spirit, God is fun. And I said, that doesn't sound right. <laughs> you know, so I started sharing it with a couple other people, and, of course, they left, and they were on Facebook, and they said, Tom Bauer said, God is fun, and nowhere in the Bible it says God is fun. So I did a Google search about messages, God is fun. And I, I found all these sermons. And then my son-in-law went to a, a, a Baptist high school of like 800 students. And he said, how many know that God is love? And they all said, yes. How many God is merciful? Yes. He said, how many know that God is fun? And only a few of them raised their hand. And I realized that what this generation, and I'm putting Mormons in the same equation, they don't know that part of the character and nature of God is that he's fun, he's adventurous, he's risk taker. And when you present that that small little piece of pie to this generation you know what everybody wants to have fun and when you tell them that part of who god is is fun then they want to know him and that's what we're doing we're making god fun we're not compromising because we believe that the gospel never changes but the ways that communicate it do mm -hmm. so i believe i'm obligated to be able to make the gospel relevant to this generation without compromising it and we're seeing many people come to a saving knowledge of jesus christ well, Jesus is is so important, and and yet Mormons, when they leave, as we've already mentioned, they don't take him with. What what do you say to an atheist, an agnostic? Uh, well, this week I've I've been. You've been uh, last night I was just lot, with. Huh? She was a Temple Mormon, and she's just hurt and wounded. And I was he was another leaving the church. Leaving the church, so she's in the process. And the other guy, the day before, he was a returned Mormon missionary. And he basically said, I said, well, what are you now? He says, I'm an agnostic or maybe an atheist. He said, but I still pray. But we were able just to just try to bring Jesus into the equation. Yeah. So so what we do is... Give that we, Jesus a chance. So, you, so the thing is, you got to look at it like that one to ten scale. You you uh, try to identify and sense where they, that where they are, and then you just give them a little piece of the pie. You know, Because I don't, gotcha. I'm not going to have the opportunity to give them the whole gospel. Because sometimes when you just, you know 
give them the Romans road or, you know, you're going to go to hell and you, know, you got to yeah. repent tonight. So it's just, it's you love them and they sense that. And then what that's going to do is that that's going to bring them to want to know more about God, just like that Mormon, I mean, that Muslim that I met that said, hey, I hate America, but I like you. And the other thing you've done is to, to learn their vernacular, their, their, their words, so that you understand what they mean when they say something and you try to use their words to, yeah. to relate better to them. And that's, I've made a lifetime commitment to do that. That's why I'm, I'm like, I'm, I, I turned 70 and I've made, I'm, I'm going to do this until I'm 79. I'm going to live on the street homeless just so I can be an effective witness to the Mormons. Because they're so used to somebody on Temple Square or somebody doing something. Yeah. But to just live on the street and be one of them and, and just love on people unconditionally and be available not only to them, but to yeah. everybody that, that's going to come around, then yeah. it, it makes it fun. Serving God is fun. Now, your family, have they, have you had a challenge with that coming out of Catholicism? Or uh, actually, they've all that... left. They all, all oh, left. And they? My mom, my, my dad, my, all my Do brothers. Do they appreciate just... where you're at? Oh, yeah. They all, they all love God now. They watch you yeah. grow. Oh, they yeah. have? Yeah. Actually, my, um, my, my oldest brother, he's, he's actually, do, he's, he's a former Catholic now, but he was very much involved in Catholicism. Catholicism yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, so God's doing great things all around. It's just exciting for me to go to all the different nations that I get to go to. And well, I've just, just love been God. impressed, uh, Tom, with you and Cindy and your commitment to serve and to your fellow men and to, to love on people and to spread mm -hmm. Jesus' messages. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, it's just tremendous. Any last-minute thoughts or anything you want to... We are just um, about that. I guess the greatest thing is just... Uh, is just to get to know God. And, and for me, the, the greatest thing is, so the more you know about God, the more life makes sense. So if you have a big problem, it's, it shows you that I have a small God. So if you have a, a big God, you have small problems. And so that, that's the bottom line is get to know who God is. And the more you get to know who God is, life makes sense. So life without God makes no sense. <laughs> Well, thanks, Tom. I appreciate it. One thing that I did want to mention, and maybe you're digressing here out of, uh, out of the spirit you just created, but you did used to go to the Manti pageant. Oh, yeah. Back in the 70s. Yeah, back in the 70s. I think we might you have been like maybe the first ones to ever go there. And that's so, where uh, I guess this, this year was the last one. That was one. so disappointing to know, but I, but I can yeah. understand, you know, the more, the more Mormonism is changing, I can see how they can get rid of the pageant. But I, I think for a lot of us, that would use, I mean, I think I went there for 10 straight years to the Manti pageant. Oh, you did? Yeah. So we'd camp out there in the park, and we'd have our Bibles and our Book of Mormons, and we'd be out there talking to hundreds and hundreds of Mormons every yeah. night. And it was, that's where I learned to love unconditionally the Mormons. But at the same time, they taught me about Mormonism, and I would teach them about biblical Christianity. In fact, one time it was great. I got to take a polygamist and one of his wives out for pizza. Oh, and you did? He, he could ask. I could ask any question I wanted. And, of course, I would ask about intimacy and everything right, else, right. but uh, it was just great to just love on people no matter who they are and what they do. Well, Tommy, you've got a great spirit and uh, what a wonderful couple you are and God bless in all you're doing. And thanks, Tom, and we'll see you next time on the Ex-Mormon Files.